Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Okay, so the doom and gloom continues. If you spend some time on X, I'm sure you're feeling it. Supposedly, even after the RFK Jr. bump, the Kamala Harris surge continues. There's a couple polls that released this week showing Kamala Harris up by 7 points nationally, which obviously is enough to make you start, you know, breaking a little bit of a sweat. But again, call me crazy, tell me I'm in denial, I just don't see it. At this point, I'm convinced that these are push polls, mainly due to the discrepancy. Can somebody please explain to me how Kamala Harris can be up seven points nationally, but still losing in the top battlegrounds? Make it frickin' make sense. The Democrats want the headline to be, Kamala Harris is up 7,000 points, the election's over. I guess the Trump camp might as well pack up their bags and just call it quits, wave the white flag. They want to run with that headline this week, but I prefer analyzing all the facts rather than just shilling an outlier poll as the headline. The Trump campaign isn't hurting, in fact the Trump campaign is still on the verge of possibly flipping a Democrat state to crystal ruby red. We gotta talk about Virginia because Virginia is still in play, there's still a bunch of avenues that lead straight to victory for the Trump camp. Let's have a conversation about that. We got some stuff to get into. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so everybody wants to focus on these head-to-head -head matchup numbers, which, you know, whatever, they're not great. But like I've mentioned a bunch of times, not necessarily bad either, historically speaking. But like I just said, I'm more focused on this. Here we have the last two general election polls conducted in the state of Virginia, one poll by the Roanoke College Institute for Policy and Opinion Research, and another poll released by Qantas Polls and News, both of them showing data that's right within the margin of error. Blah, 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 Trump's doing so bad. How is that the headline when Trump's on the verge of possibly flipping a historic Democrat state. Trump is supposedly in a bad position, but back in 2020, this is what the polling outlook looked like in the state of Virginia, with the latest Roanoke College poll showing Biden up plus 11. His average was up plus 9.4 with some polls, suggesting he'd win by 15 points. So Democrats were ahead 15 in Virginia back in 2020, and now they're ahead possibly three, maybe even less as we move forward here, but we're supposed to abandon hope. The whole notion is utterly preposterous. Democrats just want to keep pointing at the national numbers, which are obviously highly subsidized by New York and California voters, while continuing to be in absolute denial about the actual reality of the current state of polling. I'm seeing all kinds of extremely bullish takes from leftoids on X. Supposedly, Kamala Harris has created such an incredible groundswell of enthusiasm that it's now driving voter registration. Of course, with the implication being that these voter registration drives are what's going to send Kamala Harris past the finish line. The Harris effect, they're calling it. In the 13 states that have updated voter files since July 21st, we are seeing an incredible surge in voter registration relative to the same period in 2024, driven by women, voters of color, and young voters. I mean, that ought to have you shaking in your boots. The Democrats' favorite demographics, right? But again, no. The path towards victory in this race lies practically in one place and one place alone, and that's Pennsylvania. Should you have concerns of voter registration trends due to this phony Kamala surge? Well, probably not so much, and especially not in the most important states. Pennsylvania Republicans are registering more new voters than Democrats. The big picture, July turned this election year into a moment for the history books. Trump survived an assassination attempt, okay, blah, 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 frickin' blah, get to the frickin' point, please. Driving the news, Republicans added 19,127 new voter registrations to the rolls last month. A new spokesperson for the Pennsylvania Department of State tells Axios, meanwhile, Democrats added 17,495. This means that Republicans have registered more new voters across the Keystone State so far this year at 94,603 compared to Democrats' 86. 7,325 as of last week per the state. So even with Democrats engaging in all their old tactics, they're probably inundating every nursing home within the state with massive piles of Democrat voter registration forms. I'm sure they're up to no good as per usual. I mean, trying to remove Jill Stein's name in some of the most key states. Democrat leadership in the state of Michigan also just confirmed the other day that they're leaving Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s name on the ballot, despite the fact that he's dropping out of the race and doesn't want his name present. But anyways, despite their tactics, they're still lagging behind. Republicans in the state continue to close that voter registration gap. You know, I could probably sum up how I'm feeling with a very famous lyric from a very famous song, it's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Supposedly, the Democrats tell us it's the end of the world as you know it, MAGA chud Republicans, but I feel fine. This is the outlook of top battleground states. Again, are these some of the biggest polling leads you've seen across some of these states? No, of course not. It's certainly going to be a close race, but at the end of the day, like I always say, Trump is expected 
expected to overperform compared to these results, and the election map, in my view, still looks like this. I think Trump's very likely to get 268 electoral votes just as a baseline. Democrats want you to think that North Carolina's in play or at risk of flipping. I don't see that at all, and some of the new polling data that's dropping is showing Kamala Harris down four to five points. Trump still maintains a lead in Nevada. It's a slimmer lead than it was, but it's still a lead. Arizona looks like it's headed towards the right direction as well, and especially so with all the election reforms that have passed there, with House Bill 2785. And so once again, this race is going to be won in the Rust Belt. Trump's ahead in Pennsylvania. The media is getting a reality check in terms of what's happening on the ground in Pennsylvania. Was there anything? What did they think about Harris? Did they have anything to say about her? Uh, they did have. Uh, listen, uh, um, it depends on where you are. We went to a number of different battleground states in Pennsylvania, Ohio. Uh, we were in Michigan, Indiana, uh, on our way, obviously, uh, Illinois, on our way to Chicago. And it, it sort of depended on where you were. Pennsylvania, is, well, I shouldn't say Pennsylvania, I should say Philadelphia, was a bit more liberal. And the answers uh, to the questions about her and him were quite different. But for the most part, um, in Pittsburgh or in uh, the Jersey Shore and in, in Atlantic City, in Ohio especially, um, m many people did not know who she was, right? They, they weren't familiar with her. So I think she has to reintroduce herself to the public. But for him, uh, I think that they thought that he's better for the economy. And that, again, that he gave them, that he brought money into the community and that, or that he was on black people's side. The Trump campaign is spending a lot of resources in the state. Scott Pressler, of course, is doing his thing. And so, again, like I keep saying, there's obviously a clear path towards victory. There's actually multiple paths. Trump's in a position where he could win Michigan. He could win Pennsylvania. He could win Wisconsin. All of those races are well within the margin of error. There's a lot of undecided voters. There's a lot of people who are in the RFK camp that are now slowly coming over. There's a lot of independents that are seeing this unity ticket that's being proposed on the other side, and they're starting to move over as well. The state of Virginia might even be in play. And Really, as per usual, I think the closer we get to election day, the more reality sets in. There's a lot of people who are caught up in the party and caught up in the fun, but when push comes to shove, who's really going to vote for Kamala Harris? I mean, who's really motivated to vote for the same damn thing? They're trying to present her as a new product, but she's obviously anything but. Trump voters are highly motivated. They're going to walk across a field of hot coals to get to that ballot box, to tick that box, and cast that vote. Many blue in on Democrat types, of course, feel the same way, but the people in the middle that might be leaning towards that side, are they going to have that rush of motivation to really show up and cast that ballot? Personally, I'm not so sure about that one. The polling outlook isn't necessarily the greatest thing I've ever seen, but it isn't bad, and honestly, it might even be a good thing. It's telling you, don't be complacent. Put in the work and do what you got to do to stand in the way of the threat of communism. You know, I really can't think of a greater motivating factor. They want you to be depressed and hopeless. They want you to give up. But this thing is far from over. In fact, I continue to argue and I maintain my stance that I think Trump is still in the driving seat. Of course, I could be wrong. You never know what the Democrats are really up to. But really, what else am I supposed to say? Am I supposed to give up and just accept defeat? But that's never going to happen. I just got to believe that people are going to show up, that common sense is going to prevail. But I guess we'll have to see. I think the upcoming debate is really going to decide where we're going here. So let's wait for that. Let's see what happens. And then we'll kind of reconvene and get a new outlook. And we might revisit these polls next week to see if the RFK Jr. effect is going to show itself here. So far, we've seen a little bit, maybe like a little one point shift. I'm starting to see Trump also leading in some national polls that aren't making it on the RCP average because they don't necessarily have the same reputation as some of these bigger pollsters in the game. So we'll have to see. But as of right now, one thing's for sure, it seems Kamala Harris is reaching a little bit of a ceiling here and the race continues to tighten. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.